So in this video we're going to take a wee look at using git on the command line. Um, I'm assuming that you've logged into the self-service website and opened up the GitLab service and you should be here on your projects page with a list of all your projects. Uh, let's get started with a new project so we'll click new project and under uh, my existing namespace I'm just going to create a project called git command line. Uh, I'm just going to say it's a private repository. Let's just create that. And here we get the command line instructions of how to set up uh, Git to work on the command line. Now the instructions we've given you here apply uh, equally to uh, Mac and Linux uh, and might actually even be easier on those systems. But uh, on, on Windows here, I've got a, a, a Git command line window. So once you've installed Git, you can do a search for git and you'll get this uh, git bash uh, command prompt. That's what I'm working on here. So in here I can use the normal commands for having a look around. I can say a list, I can say a pwd to see what directory I'm currently working in. Uh, so the uh, GitLab has helpfully given us the instructions of the commands that we need to add to uh, get started. So I can copy that and paste each of the commands in. that in and it's saying if I want to create a new repository this is how I should go about it or if I've got an existing folder uh, I can start using it from here so I don't have a folder at the minute I'm going to go into a folder I've got here called projects there's only one directory in there and I'm just going to make a directory called git command line I'm going to go into the git command line directory and there's nothing in there there's no files at all at the minute so what I want to do then is uh, clone down the existing uh, project. Now because I've gone into a folder called git command line, I don't want to have a subdirectory called git command line as well. So I'm going to put a wee dot at the end of this uh, command here to say that I'm cloning it into the current directory because it's an empty directory. So once I do that, uh, I'm being asked for a password. That's no good. So I need to start again. I need to. That reminds me that I need to create an SSH key. So if I enter the command SSH keygen, uh, I'll see that it's going to create my key for me under the I drive and the dot SSH folder, and that's the name of the private key. And there we go. I just uh, uh, just entered a, a blank passphrase. So if I was now to look in the, I'll just actually go back to the. I drive, if I go up here and if I go into the SSH folder, we can see here that we've got an ID RSA private key and the ID RSA public key. This public key is what we need to uh, use within GitLab. So I want to cat the contents of that file out and I want to copy that file and I want to go back and visit my profile settings in GitLab. So create a new tab here with that and I go to the SSH key section and I just want to paste that key in here and give it a title as well. So add that key. So now uh, GitLab is aware of me on this computer and who I am, my identity. So it won't ask me for username and password. So I need to go back to my projects folder I called it git command line, so I want to go into git command line and I want to do my git clone. So if I can find my git clone command, and I want to clone it down into this directory. And it's not an empty directory, so I need to remove because I made the mistake earlier of not having the SSH key, uh, it'll already created a dot git folder for me, so I needed to remove it before re cloning. So the project is cloned and we can see here that it's an empty directory and I've now just got a .git folder. So if I go back here and see that, okay, so basically what the next command is telling me is to do a touch on a file called readme. So if I was to actually uh, create a file, let's see if I just go into on the folder here, I've got an empty directory. I could just create a, a different file. Let me see what we've got here. Just a text document. I'm going to change that to um, index.html, index.php. Make it a bit different. Okay. And this file, I want to edit the file. So here we go. So uh, 
Wait, hold on a second. So I'm gonna echo uh, git. So this is my PHP file. I'm gonna save that file. Hope enough for that content. And back here on the command line, if I just have a little look, I can see that there's a file now present in uh, this directory, but it hasn't yet been added to git. And I can check that with the git status command. And it's telling me here that uh, we're on the master branch and that we're currently not tracking this file. So Git's smart enough to realize that this file has been created, but it's not yet been followed by Git. So we need to say Git add, and then we can uh, give the name of the files we want to track, or we can just say the dot, just Git add dot, dot which means just uh, add every file in here that has been changed to Git tracking. So if I now do a git status now, I should see that uh, the file is being tracked. And if I've decided that that's the final change I want to make, I can do a git commit. And I use a dash m for message. And I want to say uh, created the PHP homepage. So that's my commit message. That's now been committed. And if I was to check git status, everything should be up to date. Okay, so there's nothing to commit. Trace clean. At this point, I would like to also push this code up to um, my remote up onto GitLab so I can say git push origin master. And once if I that looks like it's been successful, so if I was to go back now to reload my project, things have changed. Uh, the file doesn't have a project readme file yet, we can add that later. And we can see here there's been some activity on it. So if we go to repository, I can see here under the files tab that there's a file called index.php. Here it is. That's the, the content I created a few minutes ago. And the last commit was create the home, the create the PHP home page. So back in here, I could go back and edit the file again. If I said uh, echo hello world see if that change then if I go back to the git project and do a git status here git tells me that there's a file that has been amended but has not yet been submitted for tracking so I need to git add the file that I changed uh, and I'm gonna git commit with a message and we'll say added new line to home page and I just want to git push. So by default, it'll choose the origin and the master branch and that origin, the origin refers to GitLab in this instance. So that change has been pushed up to GitLab and we'll check that in a wee second, but we can just do a git status just to make sure everything's clean and working. And we can see that this change, this file has been changed to less than, and we can see that the new commit message is added a new line to the home page. So if we go in there, we can see that that line has now been added. If I was to subsequently go and use another computer then I could git clone the code down again by visiting the project and taking the address of the uh, project and if I was in a new project let's actually go up up to here and pret I'm pretending now that I'm on my laptop I want to do a git clone and that's the address of my git project so if I say git clone that uh, we'll say, ah, the folder already exists. So I need, let's say, I create a make a directory called git copy. I want to change directory into git copy, and I'm going to try my git clone again here. Git clone, git command line. I'm just going to clone it into dot into the current directory. Now, if I was to do this on my laptop, I would have to have generated an SSH key on the laptop and added that SSH key to GitLab as well so that it recognizes who I am. So now if I have a wee list in this directory and see what's going on, I can see there's the index page. I just uh, kept the contents of that out and I can see there's my PHP code that I created. Uh, so now I'm up to date. If I was to uh, make a change here and push that up to the... Uh, GitLab service and actually we'll just do that so if I just say I want to create a file called about us dot php oh, about us I spelled that incorrectly but we'll just get on with it so if I just say echo about us 
So I've just created a new page, and actually, you know what I'll do? I'll just rename that to About Us. Okay, and if I now do a get status, it tells me that there's a file there that needs added. So I get add the About Us page. It's been added, and I want to get commit with a message. I'm just going to say added the About Us page. And I want to try and get push then. So I've pushed that up, and if we were to have a look under GitLab, we can see here there's an About Us page that has been added. Okay, happy days. So get status in here and say everything's clean. Uh, but if I was to go back to my work computer, I'm back off my laptop and I'm into the git command and back over here, have a look, I can see that there's just the index.php file. The about us page doesn't exist on my computer, so I need to pull down from git any changes uh, that have been made. So I've done the git pull, and if I list the contents in there, I'll see that now I have all the changes that were made for the about us page. So I can cut that out and have a look at it. Okay, so that's just a brief overview of how to use Git on the command line. Uh, I personally find it a, uh, that it's a lot easier and quicker to use it by the command line, and that if you're not sure what to do, uh, if you type a command in, and Git usually gives you some advice on how to uh, what to do next. Uh, the those instructions for the command line work equally as well on Mac and Linux. Uh, so good luck with your projects.